flickball. Flickball, flickball, the flick star, flick the flick, flick the few, movie flick, film flick, flicky, licky, icky, ick, icky. And, guys, sorry, Vinny, but we have ourselves a new chief ogre. You see, I'm gonna leave Flick till last because I've, there are a few things that I need to say about the, the Flick. But there's only one place to start. Remember, guys, scan the QR code, join the Discord for all that extra, extra Selenian, extra discussions. There's only one place to a freaking start, man. There's only one place to start because there's an announcement. And this announcement, it's a bit painful, slightly painful, but because I'm the GOAT analyst, as the GOAT analyst, I've got to keep it a stack. I've got to keep it a thou. I've got to keep it a thou. Winsky! There's only one place that she comes to the three square. Bro, what does it say in the freaking intro? And if it says the home of football analysis, the home of football analysis, okay? It says it's the kid, it's the kid, half hope. It's the kid, it's the kid, half hope. It's the kid, it's the kid, half hope. And it is my duty. I was put on earth for one thing. For one thing. The reason why I was put, I was brought on this planet was to give you the true football analysis. The true football analysis. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to keep it a stack. So, we have ourselves a new, new chief ogre. For a long time, it was Vinny. For a long time. For most of the last season, it, it, it was Vinny. I'm not going to give him a nickname because I know that that would jinx him, so I won't. So right now, he's known as Lamin Olushegu Yamal. That is his name because he's currently the chief ogre of football. Guys, it is scary what Lamin Olushegu is doing. Because Lamin Olushegu Yamal is 17 years of age. Let me repeat that. Lamin Olushegu Yamal, first of his name, is 17 years of age. And this guy is Barcelona's best player. He's Barcelona's most important player. He is the guy that Barcelona are pretty much almost relying upon. Now, you could say that's very irresponsible for you to rely upon an umbilical cord merchant, a prepubescent, to lead you, you being big bassa, but it is what it is. We're in 2024. Things change. The youth now rule the world. TikTok, what's up, baby? This, 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 this kid is, ri is ridiculous. Again, please don't compare him to Messi. He's, he is not the new Messi. He's not Messi 2.0. So he's not here to emulate Messi. He's here to be him. Messi had his legacy and it was great, but that's done. This is now Yamal's legacy and it is unique for himself. Don't compare the two. Messi had his path. Yamal had his path. Yamal will not do the kind of things that Messi did. He just won't. Messi has not done what Yamal has done so far. Messi was not this good at 16. He was not this good at 17. He was not leading a club like Barcelona at 17 years of age. <laughs> Okay, that was not happening. So what this guy is doing at his age, it makes no sense. Because you say to yourself that if this guy improves and does not get any injuries, how good will this guy be in eight? Guys, in 10 years' time, it's going to be 27. <laughs> in a decade, in the year 2034, in the year 2034, he's going to be 27. Bro, after this guy has done two World Cups, he still won't even... After two World Cups, he still would not have reached his peak. He will be younger than 27 after the 2026 World Cup and the 2030 World Cup, which Cristiano Ronaldo will be in. In a cryo chamber. But, yeah, it's, it is, it's just so scary just how developed this guy is. How smart he is. His football IQ, his decision making on the ball, his composure on the ball, his maturity on the ball, his understanding of what to do in critical situations. And what we're seeing is what people used to abuse him for, those stats merchants out there. Uh, have you got to eat school? Have you got to eat school? <laughs> so that's why, geez, to the two piece. Now, just like with. Just like with Dino, I'm not going to critique him based on the goals he scores. Are you sick? No, that's, that's, not, that's not why we invest in stocks. As a shareholder in the Yamal Inc., 
We are here for Teshnik, Lala, Tata, Shomlek, Salini, and Latata. With a few assists and some goals, but we're here for Latata. We're here for Tesh. We are here as a Yamal shareholder and stakeholder. We are here for Tata, Lala, and Salini. We're here for Shoam Leg. That's what we're here for. We're here for Tesh. We're here for Tesh. That's why we invested. As an investor, we said, no, will you give us Tesh? Yes. So we are promised Tesh. And this was seen because Yamal is here to try to save football. Shout out to Ellen Haaland. Shout out to, to the cyborg. But in terms of pure football, the football that we know and understand, it's this kid. And he's 17. Let's not talk about some of the other dudes, man. <sighs> Just stay fit. That was the only question about Olmo and the transfer was, can he stay fit? Um, and what you're seeing from Olmo is, if this guy's fit, this signing made so much sense. We need a DM, defensive cover, I get it. You can never have too many good players in one position because what you want are options. But what you're seeing from Olmo is, oh, I'm not just a seven-game merchant. <laughs> I'm not just a summer tournament merchant. I'm actually a quality player. And bro, I put out a tweet. I say, your Barca fans, can you please swap the Spanish Elmo for that snow bunny merchant? Please. <laughs> because that, that finish that the Spanish Elmo did the snowboarding body merchants ain't finishing that chance. <laughs> Trust me, we are waiting. We we have to go through 10, 7, 8 opportunities before he puts the ball in the back of the, the net somehow. That ain't the same with this dude. So his finishing is top-notch. His niching is top-notch. And he's already proven to be a great and superb signing for Barcelona. And again, what he is showing here is this is the new generation of Barca. David Villa, Messi, Neymar, Cannibal, they're all gone. They're all gone. It's over. It's now a new generation, a new era, a new aesthetic, man. And just the way he took that goal, because yes, you say it's close, but I told you, many struggles to today messed that up. That goes straight at the keeper. So just the connection he had on the shot and just how to put that thing right in the top corner, absolutely so, so, so pep. Same thing with Yamal as well. Now, I just want to just go back to the Yamal thing, bro. Um, The first goal, quality, like, you know, ball over the... I should not say no. Oh, no, 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 no. That was, I think that was the second goal. Basically, there was one of those goals where beautiful placements, side foot, left foot, beautiful placements. And you know, and, and that just shows you the, the a player who has Tesh, where I don't go for power, I go for placements. I go, I'm putting that ball right in that bottom left hand corner. His other goal. Well, I, we had a discussion about people playing from the back. If you're a brick team, don't play out from the back. There should be a rule. If you're a brick team that sells fruits, you are banned from playing out from the back. This moronic Girona defender was like, yo, man, let me get my Beckenbauer on, man. Let me get my Rio Ferdinand on, man. And Yamal said, well, no, 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 hold up. You ain't Rio, you ain't Beckenbauer, you ain't Mal Maldini. Let me rob you off the ball and put this ball in the back of the net. Disgraceful goal to concede. Absolutely disgraceful. Michel should incarcerate that clown for conceding that goal. Um, it should have been more. It should be more Lewandowski. This should have been five or six. This this should have been five or six easily, because Lewandowski wasted a lot of really good opportunities. Like the one v one he had, bro. Come on, you see old school Lewandowski. That's not a piss back. He easily puts that away. He easily puts it away. So for Lewandowski, bro, you should have done a lot better in how in in in, in putting those away. Now look, man. On another day, he probably scores scores those. But you know what is so scary? Your striker misses those two great chances and you are still able to drop a four-piece. That's a dangerous team. Because Lewandowski could easily win the Pepe Pichichi. So if you know Lewandowski can give you like 15, 16 plus, but the goals are being spread around, that's how you win a league. Because you don't win a league by one guy scoring 30, 40, 50 goals. Look, Dovbik was um, Pich Pichichi winner. Did Girona win the league? No. So, it's yes, you do need that striker to score those high amounts of goals, but you need those goals to be spread around because just like today, you can have a, an issue where the striker just hits blanks. So you need the other guys to take upon the thing, which is what Pedri, Olmo, and your boy Yamal did, man. But look, this Lewandowski, I think he's going to score. This is just one, one of those days, but if Lewandowski can 
keep that consistent goal scoring in there and the goals are spread around, it's real. Now, bro, coaching, man. Coaching, like I said, guys, coaching is a real thing. Coaching is a real thing. But here's the thing. Hansi Flick is not... See, you, you can tell the micromanagers from the managers. You see, when you look at an Ateta or even like an Emery and a Pep, you see a lot of in-game coaching because you're seeing them getting guys, you know, go there, go there, go there, sweat there, sweat there. And you see a lot of hand gesture, hand movements because there's a lot of micromanaging. With Hansi Flick... There's a freedom he's given to these guys. If you look at him on the sidelines, he doesn't do that much gesturing. Because, and this is my managerial view. Again, look, you can have all the different philosophies, but the reason why I like the Hans Flick philosophy is, and I think it's mainly a kind of German philosophy, all the work is done on the training. So when you now take onto the pitch, you players, you are the guys in control. You're the guys that have agency. And I trust you and your footballing ability and footballing IQ to interpret the situations in a match to make the right decisions. I'm not going to coach you during the game. I don't have to micromanage you during the game. We've done all that work in training. And what we've seen from this Barca team are guys who have trained very well. They know exactly what they're doing. And it's that C-word man, care mystery. This is a team. From the back, whether it's Paul Victor, whether it's Kubasi, whether it's Alejandro Balde, to your boy Pedri, and then Olmo and Yamal, back to front, this, there is a symmetry through this entire team. And maybe we're still in the honeymoon period. Maybe we now have to see Hansi Flick when, when he starts losing games. Yamal is injured. Olmo is injured. He now starts getting suspensions. Do you have a plan B? How will you now react to adversity? So, yes. But guys, we have to comment on what we've seen so far. We can't just say, oh, well, like, I can't give them credit because they've not yet hit any roadblocks. When they hit the roadblocks and start being bricks, then we'll comment. But as of now, Barca are playing some of the best football in Europe. They're playing some of the best football in Europe. Like, and what I just find so crazy is most of this team are youngsters. There are no superstars in this team. Lewandowski is a Pittsburgh merchant. Yamal. Kubarsi, Balde, Pedri, these guys are young. <laughs> these guys are young. It's so far older kind of guys. What? Fer are we were now repping Ferran Torres and Rafinha? No, we're not. So, and what this shows is coaching. We know that Barca have the best youth academy in the world. Like La, La Masia is a conveyor belt of quality in terms of the kind of guys that they produce, like a Kubasi, like a Lamin Yamal. But to have the right manager and the right coach who is giving you the right instructions. Because I told you, most games are won. A lot of games are won in training. Sometimes you do need to make in-game adjustments. Yes, you do need to make some substitutions. But a large part of how well you're doing a match is in training. So when you come into the game, we are prepared. Oh, this is our plan B. Oh, this is our plan C. Oh, this is what we do in this situation because we've had those things drilled into us so much that it now becomes second nature when we're on the pitch. So what you're looking at here is, blood, this guy is coaching the heck out of this team. And I think why this is so good for Flick is his name was numero uno after that treble. I was like, bro, man, Flick is the guy, the guy, he's the guy. Then Germany. Then with what happened with Germany, the documentary, the behind the scenes, his name took a dip. But I think which, which, what this shows is those German players, which we already pretty much knew, they're not good. In terms of personnel and quality, they're not good. Because Hansi Flink, this guy, he is a chance creator. And when you have a Yamal in your team and an Olmo in your team, as opposed to a Shai Havertz or whoever, one team are going to get you those goals and are going to execute, another team are going to waste those chances. So was this really Flick's fault or was it that German team, which we know aren't very good. But these Barca guys, they are very good, as we've seen. So look, it's a long way to go. UCL is big. 
Let's see what they now do in the Champions because it's it's one thing to do good against a Girona team who are very good and in La Liga is another team now take that step up in, in the UCL. And again, 100%, my eyes are already have cycled out the dates when they now face Bayern because that's going to be a really big test. A team that he knows, but best team in Germany against what they're now doing here with Spain, that's banning will not tell me how far they've gone. But guys, I'm saying right now, I'm keeping it real, guys. I'm, I'm the go-to analyst. I can only keep it a stack. This Barcelona team look extremely good. And I am shocked how good this team look in such a short space of time. Because I'm like, well, this, this guy's, it's as if he's been coaching them for months. That is how good they look. So was Javi trash? Is Flick truly just an amazing coach manager? Is this just a fluke? Is it the opposition they are making? I don't know what it is. I can only come to what I'm saying. This team looks really good and plays some quality football. We wait and we seek, man. But guys, scan the QR code. Join the Discord. All I'm saying is this, man. Real Madrid, don't you dare. With all the kind of players you have, don't you dare lose this league title to a bunch of umbilical cord merchants and prepubescent dudes. That's what I'm saying, bro. Don't lose to, to the IVF merchants, man. Don't you dare do that, bro.